My name is Andrew Williams, and I'm a Gravity Sketch uh, design consultant and support specialist. I got my start in uh, sports product management at, at the University of Oregon, and I've been working in footwear design and for the last two years with Gravity Sketch, coming out of the pencil design school. Um, we've been working directly with some of the largest sportswear brands in the world to bring 3D to the forefront, pioneering um, cutting edge workflows in both creation and collaboration, whether that's working designer, designer, designer to developer, to your product line manager, or even to the factory. So, so what I want to go over today is using AI generation in four separate steps. Now, it's important to mention that you don't necessarily have to use all of these different steps. You can plug and play with, with the different ones, depending on your own needs and your own workflow. Now, the first step is going to be all around actually getting that initial AI generated content. And the first bit for this is going to be the 2D generation. Now, a couple of the softwares that I recommend for 2D generation include Bizcom, Replicate, which is what I used to create these images here. And one that kind of offers you a little bit more flexibility in the way that you fine tune your models and therefore output and open AI. And then the second part of this AI generation is 3D gen. So the different programs that I recommend for that include Gravity Sketch, Vizcom, and Meshi. The two models that you can see here, go, let's go ahead. Perfect. These two models that you can see here were both created using Vizcom. Now, the way that you can do that in headset is pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the blue button in my non-dominant hand, go to my settings cog, and then to my web browser. Now, I've already preloaded Vizcom into the web browser itself just for efficiency purposes. I'm going to go ahead and click on this file and we'll go over how to create a 3D generated model directly here in Gravity Sketch. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to import a image that we have in the room directly into my browser. Now the way that I can do that is I can click on the three dots here next to my layer, make sure that it's showing for everybody. Perfect. Or actually, sorry, we'll go to the Viscom icon. Then we'll go to file, open slash import, and then upload an image. As I do that, you will see this import box appear on your screen right here. Now from there, I can go ahead and drag and drop the image that I want, and that will load directly into my web browser. Now, if, if I would like to turn this into a 3D generated model, all I'm going to do now is click on the three dots next to the layer, go to generate 3D, and I typically recommend using Sharp V2. That typically gives the best fidelity output of these different options. Um, one thing to note, all these sharp and smooth options here are going to take a little bit longer to generate relative to your standard option. We'll go ahead and select Sharp V2, and that's going to start generating the background. Now, for again, for efficiency purposes, I've actually already generated the model, and it's going to look a little bit something like this. Now, once you've got your model generated, you can go on to your desktop and actually, and I'll show it exactly what it's going to look like, is go onto your desktop. We're going to go to the file itself and choose export, and you're gonna export this as a GLB. Once you've exported it as a GLB, you'll be able to dra drag and drop that file directly on the landing pad and import it into the scene. Once you've done that, you'll get two different models. Well, I've, I've actually brought in two separate example models here, and this is the one based on the image that we just used for 3D generation. So here's some of that output. Now, this output is pretty darn good, um, but you'll notice it's not perfect. For example, it's symmetrical. And of course, shoes are not symmetrical, but we're gonna get into exactly how we can use this and kind of shape it 
around something that might be more manufacturable and to spec of what we want, whether that's a shoe or a car chassis or a shoe last or a car chassis. All right. So now that we've gone over this initial generation process, we'll get into the second phase. Let's go here. And this is leveraging that three generated data and then pushing it or moving it to be, um, or, or using it in context with our reference data as well. So what you have here is I've now taken the model that we brought in and I've scaled it to the correct size. And I've actually placed it right on top of the last that I wanna use to create this shoe project. Now you'll see that, you know, it's sticking through, it's not fitting directly to the last, that's okay. Don't worry about it, that we're gonna to get to it in a second. But the way that we can use this AI generated data to begin with is actually by sketching over it and creating our mirrored line work. Now I'm gonna hide our last for now and show us what that looks like. Now this is great because the AI generated data gives us the scaffolding or the structure to build our line work around. Now it's important to mention that this doesn't necessarily have to be, it doesn't have to be one-to-one -one with the um, model itself. Feel free to take you know, your own creative li uh, liberties as it's your own project and you wanna be in the driver's seat and kind of fine tune what the AI came up with to your own needs. Now, once you've done that, you'll notice that we have some, let's go ahead and hide the model. We have this generated line work, but it's not fitting to the last, as you can see here. What we can do at this phase is actually go ahead, I'm gonna go into the line work right here, and I'm going to bake it, and I can start to push the line work to fit exactly what we want on the last, just like this, moving in and around to fit the top line of the shoe that we can see here. Of course, we can do this with the other portions of the shoe as well until we finish it out and we get line work that fits to last a little bit like this. And this is gonna be really helpful for later phases, whether that's building out our own modeling or our own surfaces or using this um, in other AI platforms as well for further iteration. Great. So now how are we gonna use that downstream? That's gonna to be to our next phase here. So I've taken the line work, I've pushed and pulled it around the last, and now I've added what's called the hidden line trick underneath the line work using a the volume tool and a flat white to make sure that I don't have that x-ray effect to where I can see through the model. Now, what can I do with this? The first thing that I can do is I can start taking screenshots and bringing it right back into VizCom. So what I'm gonna do now is pull back up VizCom in my web browser, and we are gonna go back, and we're gonna create a new file, and we'll call this, make sure everybody can see, demo, and start the studio, create, and we're good. And the next thing we'll do is just like we did in that first phase is we're gonna import a screenshot into the room. I'm gonna go VizCom icon to make sure everybody can see again. File, open import and upload an image. You will get that box appear. And now instead of dragging and dropping an already created image, we're gonna go ahead and select this camera icon. Perfect. And then I can go in and I can zoom in directly on my shoe. I'm gonna take a lateral view, take screenshot. And what you'll see now is that gets loaded directly into the browser. 
And now if I want to create some AI generated content with this and see what it pops out with, I'll add it there and I will select the describe option to describe exactly what we're seeing. And then I can go and fine tune and tweak that depending on what I want. Lateral view of low top athletic sneaker. Sounds good. We'll keep it there for now. And we can choose our palette. I'm going to keep it at VizCom general. Our reference image. We'll keep that blank for now. And then our influence. And I'm actually going to tweak this to bring it a little bit lower. I'm going to go with 75%. And once you got that, we'll click generate. And that will start generating the background. And in the meantime, while that's doing its job, we'll go over another workflow to leverage this hidden line sketch in VizCom as well. So what we can also do is we can actually export this entire model out as a GLB using our exports. And I'll just show you right here. We'll go to exports here, settings, and make sure you're set to GLB and select confirm. Once you've done that, we're going to select a vid or we're going to click into this video here, press play, and you will be able to find that G GLB on your landing pad. You can download it and then drag and drop the file directly into your BizCom browser. And then we can start to create a sketch page all leveraging that one model here. We can do that by rotating the model scaling it, copying it, bringing it down, doing the same thing. So we got a three quarter view, a lateral view, shift it over for a medial view as well. And then once you're happy with that and then fine tune the prompt, you can go ahead and generate and see how fast and quick that is to get an AI generated kind of rendered image or sketch page very quickly. Here is some of the output that you can see here. Perfect. And now we can go back, since we've already gone over that workflow, into our web browser to see what VizCom has created for us. Here we go. Here's the four different generated images. These are all pretty interesting. I actually like this one a lot. If there's one that you like, what you can do next is go add. And then we can actually bring that image directly into VR as well, if we want to use that as a reference. And the way we can do that is by clicking, let's bring this down so everybody can see, clicking on those three dots, going to export, and we're going to go export image original. Once we've done that, that's going to load directly into our downloads. There we are. And now we've got our image. Perfect. And that is using our hidden line sketch or line work to further ideate in AI tools. And with that, we'll move on to our final phase, which is refinement. So go ahead, hide that and bring in that fourth stage here. Now, now that we've gotten our, let's go ahead and get rid of this, our line work, we've gone in and we've surfaced over the top of it, going back and forth between AI and our own ideas to come out with our own model that we can see right here. But it doesn't end here um, because we can further use AI downstream to further enhance this model. Now, the first workflow that I wanna go over is using AI in a secondary tool like Blender. Now, one of my favorite ways to partner AI with something like Blender right now is having it be somewhat of a teacher. So. What you can see here is a midsole that I create, or sorry, an outsole pattern that I created using a shader node from Blender. Now you can use AI to kind of kickstart this entire process. I'm no expert in Blender, um, so I needed a little bit of help to kind of fine tune this and kind of get me started. And what I did was I went to my own LLM. I used Anthropic, but you could use ChatGPT as well. Um, whatever you're most comfortable with. And I went into Anthropic and I basically asked it to create a, um, a shader node tree that I can tweak in Blender and to give it to me as a Python script. 
Now, in addition to that, I might have given it, you know, a little bit more reference, reference in the prompt um, or a reference image as well. I'll go ahead and um, basically ask it to, to kick out a Python script. And then I can run that Python script in something like Blender. Now, once I do that, um, it, it can be a little bit hit or miss. You might have to try it two or three times and fine tune the prompt to see what works best for you. But it will kick out a node tree that you can see right here. And then you can fine tune that node tree through these different um, sliders to get an output that you're happy with, which is exactly how I created this outsole pattern here. Now it doesn't just work for shader node trees. I also used it to create the lighting environment. Feel free to you know play around and explore to, to see what fits best for your workflow. Great. So that's using AI in something like a blender to create shader node trees and lighting environments. Now it doesn't stop there because we can also use AI, generative AI, to start creating, you know, videos and some um, beginning level uh, marketing content. So what you can see here is I've actually brought in this rendered image that I got from Blender using my gravity sketch model. And I brought it into a software program called Kling AI. It doesn't necessarily have to be Kling AI. You can do similar um, experiments in, in VizCom as well. Um, but you can basically prompt in this software to create your own video. And what I created was a kind of lava animation really, really quickly. Now this, this only takes, you know, five minutes rather than, you know, having to learn exactly how to animate in Blender and can get you started. And you can kind of ideate and explore from there, depending on exactly what you want using different prompts and Kling AI.